I would suggest that women in Australia and in the rest of the Western world have already attained equality. They have every opportunity afforded to them, and more in some situations. I'll show you some evidence of that soon. However, certain commentators and the powers that be insist that women are still being treated unfairly, even when they're not. And I know why they do it. The answer is obvious. To divide us. They've been doing it for thousands of years. Think the recent Indigenous Voice referendum. It was purely an exercise in division. Divide and conquer. Create or encourage divisions among the subjects to prevent alliances that could challenge the sovereign forces. That is, when the people are fighting each other, they no longer have the power to fight the government. Unfortunately for us plebs, the gender wars can never be won, because the world needs men, and the world needs women. Without one or the other, human civilization would cease to exist. Fact. Men and women are equally important to society. And to be fair, I love women. At least the women in my life. Sure, they can be a pain sometimes, you know what I mean, right? But my intention in this presentation is not to attack women. The most recent front in this fabricated war is the so-called gender pay gap. By the end of this presentation, I hope to have convinced you that it's not even a real issue. But as a gesture of goodwill, I'll play along, I'll humour you, and offer you one potential solution to this non-issue, even though the situation would be rather questionable. First of all, let's take a look at the Australian Bureau of Statistics Gender Pay Gap Guide. Yes, there really is a difference in how much men are paid on average compared to women. But does this tell the full story? Of course not. But the activists will pretty much stop here and say, See, men are being paid more. Women are being treated unfairly. Obviously, that is bogus. Whenever you read an article about the topic, they inevitably state, The total remuneration gender pay gap is 22.8%, meaning that for every $1 a man makes, women earn, on average, 77.2 cents. Over a year, that's a $25,000 difference. Disgraceful. Here's the government's Workplace Gender Equality Agency. Yes, that exists where they ask, Australia's gender pay gap is 22.8%, exactly the same as last year. Isn't it time for change? See, it's proof that society benefits men at the expense of women. Again, it sounds completely unfair. It gives the impression, intentionally or not, that women are paid less than men for the same job. I hope that we all know that that's simply not true. Luckily, further down, they do mention this. The gender pay gap is not the same as equal pay. Equal pay is where women and men are paid the same for performing the same role or different work of equal or comparable value. In Australia, this has been a legal requirement since 1969. Okay, so women have been fairly compensated for more than 50 years. So what's the issue? Well, of course, they'd like you to believe that there's some kind of conscious or unconscious discrimination or bias occurring. Well, I just don't see it. I've worked in tertiary education for more than a decade, and I've never seen women disadvantaged in any way. Quite the opposite. All my managers and directors have been women. So if it's not discrimination, why does this pay gap occur? Well, it's pretty simple really. 1. Fewer women choose the most highly paid careers. For example, the airline industry has a fairly large gender pay gap. This is because highly paid engineers and pilots are mostly male, while the cabin and check-in staff are mostly female. Now this doesn't mean a lady can't become a pilot, and it doesn't mean a man can't become a cabin crew, but we're just talking averages here. More men study engineering. More ladies become cabin crew. This is not discrimination. These are choices. If my daughter wants to become a pilot, I'll support her wholeheartedly, and so will the universities. This is RMIT University in Melbourne's Bachelor of Aviation promotional photo, 75% of the pilots pictured are female. But according to the ABC, despite more women becoming pilots, they still only make up around 10% of Australian pilots, which is actually double the 5% global average. So it's not from lack of trying. This promotional picture from the university is clearly trying to encourage ladies to study aviation by showing 75% of their piloting students as female, even though that is probably certainly not true, but they're showing it anyway. 
They're trying to get women into this male-dominated profession. But if ladies on average don't want to join, and therefore they won't get the big bucks like their male counterparts, this is not discrimination. These are choices. I don't see anyone anywhere telling women not to become pilots. Actually, it's the opposite. It's the same with everything at these universities, which I frequently work at. Women in science at the University of Sydney. Women in engineering at UQ. Women in mathematics and statistics. Tech for girls. Women in technology. It's at every university. As I said, it's not from lack of trying. It's just that less women want to study these things, and consequently, their salaries are less on average. But yet, some people still cry that the system is rigged, and to rectify the pay gap, they demand businesses implement quotas which have often ended in disaster. For example, a couple of years ago, Queensland police unfairly hired women to meet gender quotas, watchdog fines. Basically, the police discriminated against 200 potential male recruits in favour of women, and in some cases, ineligible women had been selected over male applicants, who had performed to a higher standard across entry assessments. Not to mention that six women who were recruited, despite failing to meet the minimum entry standards, had successfully graduated from the academy. That's great, isn't it? People who were ineligible became active police officers entirely because of their gender. Is this what women want? Is this what society wants? Well, this is what quotas lead to. Australia's first woman airline pilot, Deborah Laurie, has said that she believes gender quotas are discriminatory and devalue the achievements of those who get the job. I believe it's wrong. They're attacking it from the wrong end. They need to go to the other end and encourage women to get in the industry in the first place. And they've certainly been trying. But for whatever reason, less women want to become airline pilots and engineers. Do we really need to force it? And the second major reason the gender pay gap exists, women take more time off over their careers, on average. This is not a bad thing, I'm not criticising anybody here, but women have a very important role in society, to have children. Now this is not me saying that all women have to have children, of course not, but at least some of them do. Otherwise, as I said earlier, human civilization would cease to exist. Fact. So of course, women take more time off over their lifetimes to have and raise children. And that's a great thing. My wife took five years off having our two children, and that was great for her and great for the children. I just had to work harder to make ends meet. And no, I'm not saying that it has to be the mother who raises the children. Dads can do it too if that works for their family. But obviously, on average, women take more time off for this purpose. This is not something new. If you go back thousands of years, it made sense for the men of the tribe to go out and hunt, while the women stayed back to look after camp and the children. This isn't discriminatory. This was about survival. If a pregnant lady went out and hunted and got injured or killed, well, that would be a huge detriment to the survival of the tribe. Actually, I saw a documentary recently about a tribe in Tanzania that still to this day live like they did thousands of years ago. There's no arguments about the gender pay gap. The men went out and hunted and shared the spoils with the women and children back at camp. It was the duty of the men to look after the birth givers for the very survival of the tribe. As I mentioned at the start, not only are women equal in our modern Western societies, they sometimes have it easier than men. Here's some evidence. What's the most manly job you can think of? The first thing that comes to mind for me is soldier. They're essentially the modern day version of the tribal warrior. Of course, in modern day Australia, women can become soldiers if they want to. Do you think many do? Of course not. For the entire army workforce, it's only around 10% women, less for infantry. Before I get to the details, I'd just like to mention that the Australian Defence Force has been on a bit of a diversity kick of late. One of the major reasons, I suspect, is that they can't find enough people to join. For example, they've recently been getting rid of all gendered language because, you know, you don't want soldiers using the wrong pronoun on the battlefield. Drones have been renamed. They used to be called unmanned aircraft systems, but have since been renamed to uncrewed aircraft systems because, you know, you don't want women getting upset that the drone disallowed only men on board and not women on the unmanned aircraft. Makes sense, doesn't it? The ADF also forbade cadets from wearing uniform on Wear It Purple Day in support of the LGBT community. 
because it would be considered disobeying a direct command and would be considered a protest. How dare you choose to wear uniform at an LGBT event, you bigot? Anyway, at the ADF, you can become an infantry soldier, no matter your gender. I'm pretty sure up until recently, this role was always called a rifleman. If any of you are in or were in the Australian Army, please let me know below. The health and fitness requirements are not the same for men as they are for women, with women having to perform only about half as many push-ups. I'm certainly not angry about this, but for all those people calling for gender equality and saying that men have it easier in society, well, it's not always the case. The minimum period of service for infantry soldiers for women is only two years, compared to men who have to serve for four years. That doesn't seem very fair, does it? The City of Sydney was named the most inclusive employer. How did they do it? According to their own website, Women now make up two-thirds of our senior leadership team and half of our team managers are women. And, for six years in a row, we have defied Australian trends with a pay gap in favour of women. Our 2022 gender pay was 5.3% in favour of women. See how they gloat over it? And this is what I've noticed. This was never about equality. That was already attained 50 years ago. This is about domination. If they were truly worried about equality, they wouldn't have sat there for six years with women earning more money than the men. TV and radio personality Carrie Bickmore, who last year was paid an estimated $1.5 million, much more than her co-hosts, dared to complain about the gender pay gap on her show. It's kind of like the climate elites telling us to reduce our carbon footprint while they fly around on their private jets. The gender warriors are out for blood now. Outspoken Australian feminist Clementine Ford, a single mother, who notoriously dislikes men, recently stated that marriage is an institution built on the oppression of women and compared wives to slaves. My biggest issue with marriage is that I think that it's a fundamentally flawed institution that is built on the oppression of women. My goal is to really get women to see something bigger and better for themselves than just being someone's partner or wife. Look, if women don't want to get married and don't want to have children, that's their right. If they want to pursue a career in engineering or whatever and make big bucks just like the men, go for it. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Well, not here in Australia. But you can't have it all. You can't work in a lesser paid job and then complain that your salary is not as good as an engineer or pilot. That's not discrimination. That's your choice. As I hope I've shown you by now, nobody is being cheated here, but the usual suspects are making it sound like it's intentional. Like men are actively out there trying to keep women's salaries suppressed. But as I said at the start, I'll play along and offer a solution to this so-called gender pay gap problem. Firstly, to make it equal, women would have to do exactly what men do. No time taken off for having children, no children being born. They have to work the same long hours and the same amount of overtime. Eventually, human civilization will collapse as there are no children being born. Or, for women who take time off for having children, their male partners must take an equivalent amount of time off. Obviously, this would be unfair for the man, and unfair for the family as well, as no money will be coming in just when they need the income to support their new child. Secondly, we must force all jobs to have 50% women and 50% men. As we saw with the Queensland Police, many skilled males will miss out on a job to make room for the incoming females. There probably wouldn't be enough female applicants for pilots and soldiers, so there would be job shortages. All those men will need to find other jobs, probably in nursing and kindergarten teaching. Universities will have to update their sites from women in STEM to men in nursing. Look, I'm obviously playing around here because I think this is a non-issue. Of course men can be nurses, and of course ladies can be pilots and soldiers. You can do it right now if you want to. This gender pay gap that everyone keeps banging on about, yes, it exists, but it doesn't exist because of discrimination. It exists because people have the freedom to make choices. And isn't that a good thing? 